Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial from ADSR and SilentTutorials.com. If you're not subscribed to our YouTube channel, you can do that at youtube.com forward slash ADSR Tuts. So that was a quick demo of the sound we'll be making today. It's kind of like a Melbourne selfie lead. Uh, and then this other track is just a standard bass playing the tonic note of the key. So I do want to cover a quick tip and trick really quick. So this track you'll see, uh, this is the little bass. Here's my sidechain compression, and you'll see visually uh, via the LFO tool that it's letting through some of the attack, killing most of the body, and letting through some of the tail, which is the uh, which is different from the sidechain compression I have on the actual Melbourne selfie bass. That's actually killing a lot of the attack and letting through the body. So they're kind of inverses of each other. One's letting through the attack, one's letting through more of the body. Uh, it's a good uh, trick for Melbourne drops. And then these, of course, are my drums. So let me make a new instance in Silent, and I'll copy this down. And we'll get started. So first thing we're going to do, I do want to point out that this sound is only going to be using part A. Uh, and it's not going to use a whole lot of voices. So first for your polyphony, you can just keep it on three and make sure that this stays synced. For oscillator A1, we're going to actually not touch the pitch or the volume. You can keep that where it's at. But we do need to, you do need to make sure that you have a saw wave on it, which should be the default wave. And for the phase knob, we're going to take that up to about 240 degrees. And you're not going to touch the detune or the stereo because the sound needs to be really present and you don't want it to have kind of a lot of detune unison feel. So for voices, we'll just keep that on one. And for the uh, amp envelope, you can actually keep, keep it how it is. We don't need to touch any of that. And then in oscillator A2, we're going to use a saw wave as well and you're going to keep the tune and the note and all that where it is but we're going to turn the volume down to about 7.3 turn your voices up to one so it activates that oscillator and then turn the phase of that up to about 120 degrees to 121 and then you no detune, no stereo. I mean, don't you don't have to touch the stereo, and you can keep the pan where it is. Okay, so now we're going to in the filter section for the sound. We're going to use a bandpass filter, which is this one, and you're going to take the cutoff to about 120 hertz. So just turn it down a little bit. And the resonance, let's take that up to about 4.48, or just about 4.5. And the drive, we're going to boost that a little just to give the sound some more meat to about just maybe 2.5. Okay, and moving on to the filter control, the actual master filter, let's uh, t t take the cutoff down to about 19 hertz. Let's check the warm drive, and we're going to turn the resonance up to about 4.3, kind of like what we did with the resonance in filter A. Was that? That's kind of opening up some of the tones with the bandpass filter. And you're going to turn the key tracking up to about 3.30. Okay, and let's actually go down to this mod envelope 1 because it's really important for the sound. So let's actually take in the cutoff, we'll just do activate cutoff AB. And then you're going to keep that at, well actually let's boost it to just 0.10. And for the attack, what you're going to do is you're going to bring that up to about 
3.56. So then the filter, uh, this is this is this envelope is controlled by our cutoff. So what that does is on the sound, it opens up the filter um, a little bit later in the sound. And then take the decay up to about five point, about five and a half should be good. And then the sustain, we want a little bit more of a sustain for this if it's going to be a Melbourne drop type sound. So taking it up to about two should work. Okay, and now we're going to activate the cutoff AB on our LFO1. We're going to crank the rate all the way up, and we're going to just give it a little bit of gain, just to about 0.19. And then take the actual knob here to about 3.4, just under 3.5. So if I turn up the gain, you'll hear that it's basically going to make it sound kind of crazy. I'm just using that as a little trick to kind of thicken up the sound. And then I will, just for playability, this is what I had in the first, uh, my actual preset that I made. I activated the mod wheel and I assigned that to cut off A and then I turned that knob up just a little bit to about 1.10 I think. Let me take cut off A and turn that up a little. So then when you're playing the sound, you can actually kind of mess around with the mod wheel to get some differences in there. So now really important to the sound, we need to activate the mono legato. Uh, we need to have this on, we need to have this check, check mark up. And for the portamento, we're going to take that up to about 6.10. <laughs> That will give it that glide that kind of makes it have that Melbourne bounce feel. So now the effects are pretty important in the sound. So let's activate the distortion. And we're going to keep it on overdrive. But you're going to just basically boost the dry wet up to 100 and the amount up to 10. So what, what I was doing with that was I was trying to get that kind of selfie sound without using third-party processing. And with just the filter control, it became kind of tough just using the cutoff. You'll hear that with the bandpass filter, it doesn't really uh, make the sound have the right feeling. So I did that with the distortion, and I played around with the different module types, but overdrive sounded the best to my ear. And now I'm going to activate the phaser just to make the sound have a little bit more thickness. So I'm going to start with the dry wet knob here and kind of work backwards. I'm going to take this down to about 15%. And then take the feedback down to around 5%. And then the LFO rate and the gain. Take that down. And let me turn this back up to 120. So you notice with the sound, the slightest little tweaks will kind of affect it. And I've noticed that will happen with a lot of bandpass filter type sounds. So let's actually move on and to the EQ, which is kind of important for this sound. Uh, make sure you just keep it on one pole. And then you're going to turn the bass knob the down to about 2.86 dBs. <laughs> And then turn the bass frequency up. 
And same with the treble, we're going to keep that or boost that to about 15 dB. And we're going to turn the treble frequency down. Now I'm going to activate the reverb, and I'm going to take the uh, dry wet down to about 30%. And the size to about 3.40. And now we're going to turn on the compressor just to give the sound a little bit more snap. Uh, the ratio you can kind of keep where it's at. I think that is 3. Point, yeah, at 3.88, anywhere around there should be good. So I'm actually kind of liking how this one's turning out more than the original, and the only thing I really did was I kind of changed the filter control, so that's definitely something that you can play around with on your own. But that is basically the sound, and then on I, I used one instance of Logic's channel EQ to cut out some of the low mids and boost some of the highs. And of course I have this LFO tool on, and then I have a bus going to D16's Tora Verb. And that's just one of my favorite bus reverbs for synth sounds, but you can do this with any um, any reverb or work. But the main thing I do want to point out is you'll see on my pre-delay, I have it set to um, around 234.5 milliseconds. That, that's actually in time with 128 BPMs, so it actually kind of gives it a rhythmic delay. So thanks for watching guys. If you have any questions or comments, let me know below and I'll get back to them as soon as I can. And if you haven't headed over to silenttutorials.com, check it out. Bunch of cool tutorials, presets, everything silent. And I'll see you next time guys. Thanks for watching.